What's going on everyone? Welcome back to another video. If you don't know who I am, that means you're new. I'm Mark. What's good with y'all? Go check out my other videos. Check them out. Check them out. But first, stay on this one. So, welcome back to another video in the series of three handguns that are better for concealed carry than home defense. Part five, in this case. Uh, now, of course, I will have another video on three handguns that are better for home defense than concealed carry. However, I decided to do this one first. And I will tell you this one right now. Some of y'all might not be the happiest with this list. Why is that? Are you guys going to disagree with me? No, I don't think any of y'all are going to disagree with me, especially with the three guns I chose here or the three handguns I chose. However, some of y'all are going to say, ah, well, two of them are kind of, you know, kind of cheated there. You kind of took a shortcut. But you know what? It's my channel. I can do what I want. And if I want to take what y'all would deem as a shortcut, hey, oh, well. So... For starters, we're going to start with the Glock 42. The Glock 42, a 6 plus 1 round capacity 380 from Glock, of course. And, I mean, a great overall concealed carry gun. Very, very small. It would definitely be great for a deep concealment situation. I've seen several women who are, you know, they love their Glock 42. I mean, it's actually very, it's a very popular handgun as well among women as big point that I should point out there but for the size the capacity the shootability would it ever be considered good for home defense let's be 100% honest with each other here no we're going to start with the caliber itself 380 ACP while I carry even a 380 as my backup gun I do also believe that the 380 round is not the best for self-defense which is why my main carry gun is a nine millimeter <laughs> You know, so I felt that one should have been obvious. I felt that should have been put out there immediately. While 380, yes, it can do the job. <clears throat> it's not the best for it. Now, would I put it down to par as the same as like 22 LR or something? Probably not. Uh, ballistically speaking, 380 ACP performs a lot better than 22 LR. However, it's still not that great of a round that I would only want to have seven rounds with. Now, I'm sure there are pinky extender mags for it out there that gives you that extra round in it. And, of course, that's always good. Get that extra round if you can. Uh, however, <laughs> I mean, just from the round itself, it's probably not going to be your best bet for home defense. Now we're going to go ahead and move into the size itself. Extremely small, very, very small at that. Uh, so, therefore, while even though it's only chambered in 380, it still has, you know, a little bit of snappiness to it. So the shootability is not going to be 100% there. Is it impossible to shoot? No, not by any standard. Uh, Glock 42 is a pretty easy gun to shoot. That's not the problem. However, it is going to be a bit snappy considering the size it is, regardless of the fact that it's chambered at 380. <clears throat> and last but not least, of course, is going to be the capacity. Even if you do find a pinky extender mag and you get, you know, 7 plus 1 like I have with my Ruger LCP, that's just not a good enough capacity for home defense, in my opinion. And I know there are some people who are going to argue, oh, well, I use a revolver for my home defense gun, and that only has six rounds in it. You know, yeah, I get that. However, unless you're going with 38 Special alone, if you're going any higher than 38 Special, the round that you have in your revolver packs a lot more of a punch and has a lot more stopping power than 380 ACP does. But now, here's another thing I want to point out, too. Capacity, of course, not being my biggest deal on it. However, another reason why it would not be great for home defense is that it does not give you the capability of attaching a light on there. There is no accessory rail on the Glock 42. Now, of course, I'm sure there are some lights, maybe some, you know, nowhere near as bright lights as I would want to have for home defense lights that you could get on it. However, it's just not going to do the job for home defense. Now, I'm sure some of y'all are wondering, when are we going to get into the part where we're going to think that you cheated? You know, you took an easy way out. Right now. The second one on the list. Moving on from the Glock 42, we have the Glock 43. <laughs> I, knew some, I know some of y'all are probably sitting there like, dog, really? I knew this was going to happen. Like, I know some of y'all are just sitting there like mad thinking, yep, I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. But I had to sit there. If I'm talking about the Glock 42, I have to talk about the Glock 43 as well. Some people may try to call it, you know, its bigger brother. I wouldn't call it that. I would probably call it its stronger twin, if you would. Uh, the Glock 43 
has the same capacity as the Glock 42, is pretty much, pretty much, notice how I said that part, pretty much the same size as the Glock 42. There might be some minor differences, if I'm not mistaken. Except being, except instead of being chambered in 380 ACP, it is chambered in 9mm or 9x19, 9mm Parabellum, 9mm Luger, however you want to word it. It is chambered in 9mm instead of 380 ACP. <clears throat> now, does this make it a better gun for concealed carry? In my opinion, yeah. Yeah, 100%. Because even though it is an extremely small gun, even though 9mm has more recoil to it than 380 ACP, and the gun will still be snappy, 9mm still does a better job of defending yourself than 380 ACP ever will. That's like somebody trying to make the argument that 40 Smith & Wesson will do a better job at stopping a threat than 10mm will. It's just not happening. That's just not how the rounds work. 9mm, ballistically speaking, will outperform 380 ACP any day of the week. Now, is 9mm a good enough caliber to defend your home with? Yes, absolutely. So you might be wondering, okay, where are we going to get into how it's not so great for home defense, but what makes it so good for concealed carry? Obviously, the size is going to be a big factor, of course. The capacity that you get is the same capacity as the Glock 42, so you get a 6 plus one capacity, you get seven rounds as a whole. Once again, with the size, it is great for deep concealment. These guns that I'm going to mention today, you will notice, are very good for deep concealment, not just your regular concealed carry or everyday carry. Uh, <laughs> but with the Glock 43, once again, no accessory rail. You get the same capacity as you would with the Glock 42. <sighs> The only difference that I would argue makes the Glock 43 better than the Glock 42, obviously, is going to be that it is chambered in 9mm. Once again, you know, there, there is no issue with operating the Glock itself. However, its shootability is going to be a bit on the rough side because of how small it is, the round it's chambered in. Even ignoring the round it's chambered in, once again, with the Glock 42, with how small it is, there is a tiny bit of snappiness to it. So in 9mm, you're going to expect a little bit more snappiness. So there are several reasons as to why the Glock 43, just like the Glock 42, is not so great for home defense. But I think talking about both of them, covering them both, at least in one video, kind of did a bit more justice here on this little shortcut, as some might call it. And you might be wondering, well, why does he keep calling it a shortcut? Because I call it a shortcut. So it's not like you guys are just sitting here Oh, well, you took a shortcut and I'm laughing about it. I'm calling it a shortcut even. <laughs> Next, third. This one is a, uh, <laughs> it's an interesting gun. It's one of the guns of all time. How about that? And before I say the name of it, when I say the name of it, it's not what you think. So any ATF agent that might be watching this, you can go ahead and just, I don't know, train shooting someone else's dog because it's not going to be mine. The switch gun, once again, not what you think. Now, with <laughs> in today's day and age, unfortunately, because of all the, the, the hooliganism and the crime that's going around, uh, when people hear the word switch and they hear the word gun, they're thinking of a Glock with a switch on it. They're thinking of something along those lines. That is extremely illegal. That is not what I'm referring to in any capacity whatsoever. A switch gun, okay, the switch gun is a single action revolver. Okay, now some of y'all might be wondering why is it called a switch gun? Well, it folds closed and it stays locked due to the switch that's on the handle. So you essentially push a switch down or up. I don't own one, so I couldn't tell you, but. <clears throat> You essentially are going to operate the switch, and that's what flips the uh, the cylinder and the barrel up, and therefore you will have an operating gun again. Now, some of y'all might be wondering, what caliber does this come chambered in? What's the capacity on it? If I'm not mistaken, the capacity was around six rounds. Uh, I'll even be nice to say eight, even though I'm like 100% certain it wasn't eight. Uh, but even eight rounds. Uh, I've seen it come in 22 LR and 22 Magnum. Now, we'll be nice, pick the 22 Magnum version. <laughs> uh, this gun might be good for a backup gun, maybe. 
may be. And the reason why I'm stressing that is because of the fact that it's a single action revolver. Now, some of y'all who might, you know, be new to firearms, you might be wondering what does single action mean? What does double action mean? What does single double action mean? You know what I mean? What, how can you explain this in a much simpler way? Well, we're only going to talk about single action in this case due to the fact that the gun we're talking about, the switch gun, is a single action revolver. So a single action revolver means you're going to have to pull the hammer back each time you want to fire a round. You go ahead and pull the hammer back. Bah. Hammer back. Bah. Hammer back. Bah. That is how a single action revolver works. The reason why they're called single actions is because pulling the trigger operates one singular action, which is letting the hammer fall. Now, that is a big problem in my opinion. One, because most people in a self-defense situation, they're not going to remember to keep pulling the hammer back. They're just not going to. That's not how a majority of people think. That's not how a lot of people operate, especially in a situation where their life is on the line. That makes it a big, big issue for me as a whole for self-defense, concealed carry and home defense. Now, does that mean this might not be the worst backup gun? It might not be. You know what I mean? It's definitely small enough that it can fit in your pocket. It's definitely something that, you know, most people, I guess, wouldn't expect. However, it's capacity, it's caliber, I mean, just how the firearm operates itself, beyond not making it too great for concealed carry, it makes it truly awful for home defense. <laughs> I'm going to get into it. So, obviously, you're not going to be able to add any form of accessories on it, whether that be a light, whether that be a dot, whatever. And I actually haven't even talked about the fact that the Glock 42 and the Glock 43, unless... Unless I'm, unless I'm mistaken here, I haven't seen any MOS versions of them, but regardless, uh, the switch gun, you can't put any accessories on it. Uh, so that's really not great for a home defense gun. You at least want a light on there so you can see what you're shooting at. Uh, <laughs> there's that. The fact that it's single action, so therefore you once again are having to cock the hammer back manually before you can pull the trigger and let off a round. Uh, I'm not a big fan of that. Let me see here. The caliber is chambered, and once again, even choosing 22 Magnum, while it might not be the worst for self-defense, it's definitely not the best by far. Uh, you know, if you've seen my videos talking about 22 Magnum, you would know that it's often compared to the 57 by 28 round, uh, and I think that's a you know decently fair comparison. It's not the you know the hardest hitting round, but regardless, even with eight rounds, which I once again am more than certain that it was six rounds uh with eight rounds hold on just i just wanted to make sure that my microphone was still on with eight rounds though of 22 magnum you're not looking at very much chances of getting through whatever life or death situation you're getting through uh or at least you're hoping to get through so yeah beyond the size of it because it's already not going to be fun to shoot as a whole just because of how the gun is built itself it looks completely awful to shoot. Uh, the capacity is not that great. The caliber is eh. And that's, once again, if you pick the 22 Magnum uh, variant, because they have a 22 LR variant. Overall, it's just not that great of a gun as a whole, but it definitely would be a lot better for concealed carry than home defense. Now, with that being said, I think that about wraps it up for this video. I know some of y'all are going to say with the first two, it was kind of, you know, a, a cheap move, a shortcut, if you would. But it, it at least was important to talk about both of them and get both of them out of the way in one video. With that being said, y'all make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share, hit that bell. When you hit that bell, hit all. And whether or not you agree with me about my opinion on these three guns or handguns in particular, about whether or not they're better for concealed carry than home defense, Go ahead and comment down below why or why not you agree with me. With that being said, y'all make sure to check out all my other videos. Y'all make sure to stay legal, stay safe, stay dangerous. Have a good one, y'all. Peace.